I've been thinking a lot about DLC reviews lately. I just reviewed a Knights of Azure 2 DLC a couple days ago, and today I'm going to review another one. If you recall, I said that there were two new story expansions for Knights of Azure 2, a paid one and a free one. The paid one was Time Drifts Through the Moonlit Night. Today, we're on to the new one, the one that's free of charge that you can download without spending any money past the base game. Here is my review of Knights of Azure 2, The Foreigner in a Wonderland of Sweets. The Foreigner, as I will call it in this review, takes place right in the middle of the game's story, right around Chapter 4. You'll get a cutscene with Eleanor, the chocolate connoisseur of the group, jumping off the walls really hyper because she discovered the Land of Sweets, a mythical land made almost entirely of sweet food and desserts. She wants to go there because it is the rumored home of a legendary ingredient said to create the world's greatest chocolate. Practically begging, Alusha agrees to explore with Eleanor, fighting off the fiends so they can dive straight into this land of sweets and get that ingredient. Now the story of this campaign is really entertaining because it's so different from the rest of the game. Knights of Azure 2 is a very dreary, dark game about a demon trying to destroy the world. Going to a dungeon to get a baking ingredient to bake chocolate is so lighthearted, and really it's right out of the Atelier series, Atelier series, whatever you want to call it. And that is really why I liked it so much. It's cute and it's fun, completely different from the serious dark game that it is within. Now as far as gameplay is concerned, the base combat system has not changed here, but this campaign does change up the gameplay a little bit, unlike the previous paid DLC. As far as content goes, the Foreigner adds a new dungeon, new enemies in that dungeon, a new gameplay mechanic which I'm going to explain in a moment, and a new boss fight. Now the dungeon is called Phantom Dulce Terra, otherwise known as the Land of Sweets and it is significantly larger than the Drifting Ark from the last campaign. It has several different dungeons hidden within it that you can explore. And the real beauty of this dungeon is the new gameplay mechanic known as the Popcorn Machine. The candy factory that the dungeon is around has a self-defense system that shoots giant kernels of popcorn at you. So while you're running around the dungeon, fighting off enemies and trying to get key items to unlock the boss room, you're going to have giant kernels of popcorn raining down from the sky that will stun, knock you back, and damage you. And that's really an extra bit of strategy, but it's just a really neat thing to just be running around, fighting fiends, and seeing popcorn kernels bigger than your head falling down all around you. Now the other bit of uniqueness in this campaign is the boss. The Phantom Dulce Terra boss is set up with lots of cover around, giant graham crackers that pop out of the ground, and because the boss has a minigun, you can't just dash right up to him and start attacking him. One bullet hits and you are knocked back, followed by several more bullets. So you have to use strategy, use the graham cracker cover, wait for him to run out of ammo, then dash to the next cover and slowly make your way up so you can finally start damaging him and get to the next phase of the boss. And that really makes the boss unique. None of the other bosses in the game are like this. Some of them have knockback attacks, sure, but none of them have that much strategy to them. This was a really interesting boss compared to pretty much everything else in the game. And thinking about this DLC is pretty funny because it adds a lot more content than the paid one did. The dungeon's a lot bigger, you have a really unique boss, you've got a popcorn machine self-defense mechanic for the dungeon, but it's balanced because this campaign is very, very, very short. And if you thought the two-hour campaign for Time Drifts was short, no, this is short. From the time you get the initial cutscenes, go through the dungeon, fight the boss, and get the ending cutscenes, you might spend around 25 minutes in the DLC campaign. 25 minutes, that's it. And I'm really conflicted about this because I don't want to take points for time because it's free, but you've got a 25 to 30 hour RPG. 
and a story expansion that lasts 25 minutes. That's nothing. Now, in conclusion, The Foreigner in a Wonderland of Sweets is a very cute DLC campaign for the more Atelier interested crowd to enjoy. Now, the campaign barely lasts 25 minutes, but it brings a lot of uniqueness in the brighter atmosphere, the more strategic boss fight, and the adorable popcorn machine gameplay mechanic. Reviews to Go rates Knights of Azure 2's second story expansion, The Foreigner in a Wonderland of Sweets, a 9 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at www.reviewstogo.com.